Hello, good evening and welcome to News 360 from the News Hub. I am Portia Gabo. I am Issa Mone. We have the headlines for tonight coming up in a moment. News 360 headlines is brought to you by... Police administration to ensure every seventy police personnel with insurance cover of fifty thousand Ghana cities. Also in the bulletin, we'll tell you the other side of one of the most vilified religious groups in the world. We'll also tell you the story of a 36-year-old mother who decides to commit suicide because society constantly mocked her for having four children with special needs. Coming up in sports, self-acclaimed local boxing king, Brian Makamoko, a.k.a. Bukum Banku, handed his first professional defeat by Basti Samir Saturday night. An international news, WHO, cancels Robert Mugabe's Goodwill Ambassador role. The details, including sports entertainment, coming up this hour. Stay with us. In our very first story, after narrowly escaping death from the collapse of their classroom block, kindergarten pupils at Bonsaho DA School at the Atimokwa district of the central region are struggling to hold classes. Pupils study without a board and have inadequate furniture. A report by Spencer Kwabana Boate Mensa. <laughs> Time was up for pupils at Bonsahon DA school to say the Lord's Prayer and pledge to be faithful to Ghana, but attendance was poor for several reasons. Lessons had begun, but pupils in this class study in fear that the weak building put up many years ago could come down at any time to claim lives and halt academics. At the beginning of this academic year, about 50 kindergarten one and two pupils narrowly escaped death when their classroom block collapsed before school hours. School authorities have improvised a structure for the children to have classes. However, furniture and writing boards are unavailable for the combined class, forcing the school authority to stop KG2 pupils from bringing books to school. For about a month now, these pupils come to school every day to learn and revise poems. The dusty nature of the classroom is the reason, and this puts a question on the provision of quality education for all. Teachers speaking off camera said if the situation persists, it will take time for the kids to pick up. The chief of Bonsa Honanapia could be recounted. Some teachers who are unable to face the challenges of the school leave the community, leaving the kids to their fate. Old students of Bonsahun DA school are therefore calling on authorities to consider their constitutional mandate of providing equal rights to educational opportunities and facilities for all. And the absence of elective mass chemistry and biology teachers in the Bumburu Senior High Technical School in the Northern Region is hampering quality teaching and learning. The two general science teachers in the school double as biology and chemistry tutors. The Bonkurugu Senior High Technical School was established in 1991. The school currently has a student population of 1,724. Lessons begin at exactly 7 a.m. each day and ends at 1.45 p.m. with two breaks at 10 a.m. at noon. Total of nine subjects are treated each day, but two out of the nine lessons are lost to their dining periods. Students spend close to an hour for breakfast because they are forced to run shift at the dining hall due to its relatively small nature. When students go for dining, there are some old benches and tables there. They serve a few at a time and therefore the students eat in batches. Um, they are spending quite some time instead of just the normal um, 20 minutes. Headmaster of the school, Mohamed Ayana, said construction of a dining hall has stalled. About a year ago, 
when the contractor came to site. I called him three days ago and he said he's still waiting for payment for him, get found. And that when the payment is done, he'll return to site and he'll get the roof over it. Though a technical school, it also offers science courses such as integrated and agricultural sciences. Even though there are no tutors to teach biology, chemistry and elective mathematics, it currently depends on non-specialized teaching staff with only two general science teachers doubling as biology and chemistry teachers. And away from the northern region, residents of Atadeka and New York in the Thun Katamanso constituency have expressed worry over the lack of street lights and bad road network connecting motorists in the community and beyond. Well, according to them, they do not feel safe following constant attacks and robberies at night. The 10 kilometer stretch links many communities in the area, but the road is in a deplorable state. When someone falls sick, we struggle to even get a vehicle to convey the person to the hospital because drivers hardly ply this road. Especially in rainy season, we find it difficult to pass here. So most of the time we go forward because of the nature of the road. It is a very bad road. We don't have street light. Owing to this, we experience frequent robbery attacks. We spend a lot of money buying spare parts because our vehicles break down often. Due to the situation, our children are forced to trek to school because the drivers hardly ply the stretch. These have been the concerns for the past seven years. We have tried all our best for us to face the road. Unfortunately, any time we do the movement, things rather cross it and then uh, the road will, will not be done. We checked with the Kpon Katamanso District Assembly, but the chief executive officer declined to speak. Urgent attention is needed to restore the socio-economic activities in the area. You're watching News 360 from Adesawi here in Accra. And tension is mounting at Tema, PSC shipyard, over the activities of two rival unions that represent the staff. The problem, if not resolved, could spark labor unrest at the country's port as the two unions, Maritime and Dock Workers Union, and Post Seamen Maritime and Dockers Union, are at each other's throat. The two rivalry unions are the Port Seamen Maritime Dockers Union and the Maritime Dock Workers Union of the TUC. The Maritime and Dock Workers Union of the TUC have been agitating for the removal of the managing director, Captain Francis Micah, of the PSC shipyard. But the leadership of the senior staff union of GPHE, who are members of the Maritime Dock Workers Union of the TUC, disagrees. In an unstable environment, as a result of disturbances in labor front, there is no way productivity can be attained. That the chief executive and the HR of the shipyard be moved. We found it very unfortunate. Appeals have been made to the Transport Ministry to intervene and restore calm. And the advent of the information revolution has brought with it a new form of criminal behavior, cybercrime. Cybercrime is growing faster in Africa than on any other continent. The Ministry of Communications will from Monday, October 23 to 27, hold the Cyber Security Week. This year's celebration is themed Securing Ghana's Digital Journey. Ghana is set to ratify the Convention on Cybercrime by the end of 2017 to enhance the country's resolve to combat the crime. National Cyber Security Advisor Albert Nchubwesiakun will be joining us in a moment and uh, we're going to have some discussion with him too. But 
Hello, Albert. Good evening, and thank you for agreeing to speak to us. Hi. Good evening to you, Issa, and also to your viewers. Right. Is the rate of cybercrime in Ghana anything to worry about? Well, this is an interesting question. Um, what I can tell you is uh, Ghana is developing as far as ICT is concerned. Uh, in other words, every single day we have a new device which connects to the Internet, which connects to network. Yeah. And by that development, we should be expecting the rate of cyber attacks you know, to increase. It's rational that as the country is taking steps to embrace technology in every aspect of, of our economy, whether in a business, at an individual level, in government, then we provide attack vectors. You know, we provide different options, target point for cyber attack. So yes, uh, the statistics, whether it's from Bank of Ghana, whether it's a research conducted by an industry player, whether it is a government research paper on cybercrime trends. I think that is the background that we should see this um, issues. Indeed, cybercrime is increasing. This is a fact. And it's increasing because of the way Ghana is embracing ICT. Ghana is developing, um, and, and it's one of the topmost countries in which we are experiencing a high rate of ICT penetration. And hence, we should expect also increase in cyber attacks yes um we, we are yet to ratify the convention on cyber crime and that will be by the end of 2017 but how will this kind of ratification enhance the country's resolve to combat the crime it's, it's very important you know dealing with cyber crime means we're looking at different angles there is a technical angle where you need to step up uh, certain technical controls uh, to protect your network there is an aspect of capacity building where you need to train people to be aware of cyber crimes. There is an aspect of legislation. We need to enhance our laws and operationalize existing legislation to be able to deal with the issues. But most importantly, as you mentioned, the need for international cooperation. And there is a fundamental reason for that. If you conduct a basic analysis among our citizens, most of us are using Gmail's, um, Yahoo's, Hotmail's account. And, and if you find out these data, the, the information that we are exchanging, they are sitting on servers, certain in the U.S., for example. So let's say typically a fraudster in Ghana has perpetrated fraud using Gmail. Certain information are certain somewhere in California, but our CID will have to obtain that evidence to prove his case beyond a reasonable doubt in the court of law. The implication is Ghana needs to reach out to the international players. We need to facilitate that kind of uh, relationship at the international level to be able to obtain that information that will be admissible in the court of law. So it is one practical angle of looking at why Ghana needs to accede to the Budapest Convention. Because Generally, we are using technology which has been developed by countries in Europe and the U.S., and these countries have acceded to the convention. So it becomes easier that we can fight the cybercrime across different borders. And it is necessary. Ghana is making progress in that area. But the police will tell you they get stuck when they need to go beyond the boundaries of this country. And hence, there's a need to reach out to our international partners. And the Budapest Convention is one of the best international instrument to rely on as far as dealing with cybercrime is concerned. Right. I mean, we, we, we have recently experienced the digitization of Ghana's property address system. It's fantastic. I tried it recently, and I love it. So what is the danger? What should we be afraid of? I, I'm happy you've mentioned that. Um, mm. You know, tomorrow is starting the National Cyber Security Week, mm. and... There are different reasons why the event is coming up. And one of the key reasons, you know, from the government perspective is the rate at which um, currently we have a digitalization. The mm -hmm. national identification system, the digital addressing system is in play. Mm -hmm. uh, the paperless portals there, uh, register general, going digital, all this development 
you know, moves towards the angle of ICT development, which I, I shared with you earlier on. Mm. And as a matter of fact, specific measures have been taken before the, um, the digital addressing system, you know, was launched. There was a stakeholder discussion mm. uh, looking at the privacy and data protection aspect of it. And uh, we also have been a meeting this very week to make sure that we conduct regular security assessment audit on infrastructure. And, and I think the system has even been designed uh, from the security angle. And the Minister for Communication mentioned this uh, during the launch of the, of the initiative. Uh, I am particularly interested in that area, and we've made the necessary recommendation as far as the security around that uh, system is concerned. We're working hand in hand with NITA, which is housing the infrastructure, uh, to ensure that you know privacy is protected, data which is being transferred, you know, as far as that project is concerned, are protected. So it is a serious um, priority for the government, and specific measures are being done to ensure its protection. Absolutely, it is yeah. designed to be protected, mm. and I don't think citizens have got any fear of any sort as far as their data is concerned. Thank you very much, Albert, for speaking to us. And I'm sure we will come back to you as soon as there are issues to talk about because, uh, you know, the technology industry moves faster than the human mind. Well, if you are a personnel of the Ghana Police Service, this news might be of great interest to you because the police administration is ensuring every seven police personnel with an insurance package of 50,000 cities. Under this comprehensive insurance package, three children of a personnel who dies in line of duty shall enjoy free education up to tertiary level. The four-year transformational agenda by the police is aimed at changing the mindset of personnel as well as ensuring the promotion of the welfare of serving personnel. As part of the welfare package, very soon, every police officer will have an insurance cover of 50,000 cities in case of death in line of duty. Even if one should die accidentally or naturally, the family will be entitled to 25,000 Ghana cities. Addressing the closing ceremony of a compulsory motor traffic and transport department training in Accra, the Inspector General of Police, David Asantia Pietu, urged all service personnel to support the new agenda. All of us have suffered from delays in reimbursement of medical expenses. This package has provided 12,500 for critical ailments. What is more interesting about this package is that in the event of death in line of duty, three children will be catered for from nursery to tertiary institutions. Director General, please MTTD, COP Maxwell Atingani, told TV3 personnel of the service will be judged by their performance on the road. The way and manner that we, ha we are supposed to operate as MTT, the public will see drastic change. We want the face to change. We want to satisfy the public. And that's it. A total of 665 newly drafted MTTD personnel took part in the transformational training in 10 batches over 10 weeks to be deployed in the Accra region. The public is to identify the new MTTD with additional badge and balls on their left shoulder and report any misconduct to the nearest police station. And the Kweishi Divisional Police Commander ACP Felix Ofusuajimai has called on civil society in the Lijokuku Kroa municipality to support the police in combating crime. He also called for the reformation of watchdog groups in various communities to ensure suspected characters are flushed out. The newly appointed Peshi Divisional Police Commander, ACP Felix Fuswajiman, observed crime combat the world over has become a shared responsibility. The commander proposed the reformation of watchdog groups in various communities to ensure suspected characters are dealt with. 
go into the community and then integrate them. Then charge the community to support them. You know, it's a voluntary kind of service. So we charge the community members to support them by way of maybe their uniform, their shoes and money to ginger them to perform their roles effectively. He cautioned civil society not to assume the powers of the police, urging them to hand over suspected characters. ACP Phyllis Fuswajiman entreated members of the Lejokuku Korwa municipality to lend the necessary support. Peshi Divisional Police Commander's meeting with the residents of Lejokuku Krawa Municipality is aimed at educating the public about police readiness to fight crimes in the municipality. In other news, it is one of the most vilified religious groups in the world, but it seems to be one of the most organized groups and the only Christian organization that has named their meeting places as Kingdom Halls. Godfrey Tanam spent some time with Jehovah Witnesses and has come through with this report. It is very common to find people later around when a lot of people converge at a particular area. But with thousands of people gathered here, it is very difficult to even find a sachet lying on the ground. Obviously, without people littering around, nature will give the environment a different look. No one is specifically assigned or employed to clean the surroundings, but members take up the role to constantly keep the environment clean. Although members carry plastic bags containing food and other items, none drops these bags around. With the practice of waste segregation, which has become difficult to practice among Ghanaians in general, the witnesses have given it prominence. The organization so far stands out with water harvesting. Water for Ghana Water Company is processed for drinking, whilst rainwater is harvested for the toilets and for watering lawns. Spending some few minutes with the Jehovah Witnesses here, one wonders why Russia will consider them as extremists and ban them from the country. We also puzzle at that. Our being very well organized is not because we are some special people. It's because of the training we receive from the Bible. Uh, so if Russia has decided that uh, uh, we are extremists, the general populace judge for them. But how does this affect propagation and their practice? We don't give up. Members were encouraged to build up hope in their lives, no matter the situation they find themselves in. We must start now to work hard to strengthen our hope in that future blessing. Well, with hope and determination, one can be assured of fighting any challenge that may arise. Godfrey Tanam, TV2 News, Accra. And the country's food safety policy adopted on April 27, 2015, is yet to be enacted into law and implemented. This would have helped with the enforcement of food safety and standards that will make institutions and individuals more responsible for their actions. The National Food Safety Policy is to protect consumers. At a training workshop in Accra, for journalists by the National Codex Committee, a member of the committee, John Odami Dakwa, noted the need to change behaviors that are inconsistent with food safety practices. The change, he indicated, must include measures that would protect food from contamination through Ghana's food chain. He stated science and technology should be the bedrock of one district, one factory initiative. We are growing for food. We are growing food for, for wealth. We also have the one district, one factory push. These are two pronged approaches to reduce poverty, to make money available for national development. And to me, standard is the key. That food should be able to trade it in on the marketplace. Head of Public Relations at the Ghana Standards Authority, Dr. Kofi Amponsa Bidiaku, said Codex will ensure that exported food items are safe and competitive. We can also export them to other countries. Because it is safe, people are likely to buy from you. You get a lot of foreign exchange. So it's important that as much as possible, 
we uh, are able to produce of our for our people locally and also export to other countries so we can make a lot of money and make the country rich. Deputy Director General of the Ghana Standards Authority, Kofi Nagate, noted ensuring food safety and standards will aid fair trade among countries. Ghana, like other countries, engages international trade in the area of food imports and exports. Whatever is imported or exported must be safe for consumption. Otherwise, various countries cannot collaborate with each other through international food trade. We all know about the ban banning of uh, exports of vegetables to the EU because of food standards, because we're not meeting their standards. That's all. For food safety to be promoted in the country, budget allocation must be adequate and reasonable. There is also a need for support from institutions and private sector, as well as government, which should make food safety as a public health issue. The police in Sakumono are seeking public assistance in locating the whereabouts of 10-year-old Elizabeth Amwaliteti. She reportedly left her Lashibi residence around 5 p.m. Tuesday, October 17, and has since not been seen. All efforts at tracing Elizabeth have not been successful. She is dark in complexion, about four feet tall, and speaks only fancy. Anyone who knows her whereabouts should please contact the nearest police station. Volunteers may also call the police emergency number 191 or crime fighters toll free number 18555 to assist. And you're watching News 360 on TV3. We will return with mission in a moment. Hello again, it's now time for Mission and this program is sponsored by Star Ghana with support from DFID, Danida and the European Union. In a very first story, they call me the cursed one, saying I've given birth to mentally unstable children. I feel very isolated and want to move away from this neighborhood. These are the words of 36-year-old Golda Nunu, who wanted to commit suicide because society constantly mocked her for having four children with special needs. While well, the mission team caught up with her as she spoke on the need to have an inclusive society. When Golda got married, she was hopeful of a blissful union that would produce children who would become responsible citizens. When she finally gave birth, all her children had special needs, three of them having cerebral palsy. Her first child was not present at the time of her visit. <laughs> it is not easy to have three, four children with a challenges. No mother can sit down and say, I'll just look at my children with these disabilities. I went through tough. People rejected me. I had a, 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 a huge stress on me here and there without knowing even myself who I am. According to her, she is constantly mocked in society and has to lock her children indoors for fear of stigmatization. The situation is so bad that children in the neighborhood refuse to play with their kids and she cannot buy items from the neighborhood. So, on Wednesday, October 18, she decided to end it all. <laughs> A nearby person who is at her residence just told me, you have given birth to a mad children and a sick children. You will always suffer. That is why 
you are going through this. I run into my room, kneeled with tears. Even that day, I didn't control my tears. Attempts by Golda to get her children in a special needs school proved futile as they were refused admission. When we went, they assessed these children, my children, and because of the toiletry training, we wasn't able to qualify to go to the school. So my children, or especially the lady didn't qualify for that so supposed to come home and train her before they will accept her at the school two years ago ghana launched the inclusive education policy to ensure that all children go to school regardless of their disabilities however many parents of children with special needs think that the policy is not inclusive enough Majority of children with special needs in Ghana are still not in school in spite of the inclusive education policy. Golda wants the Departments of Social Welfare, non-governmental organizations, philanthropists and corporate organizations to come to her aid at least to get the children in school. These children are special from God. So whatever it might be the case, society should accept us. They shouldn't reject us. We are part of them, but this only thing that has differentiated us is being given birth to children who are disabilities doesn't make us that we are not among them. The mission team will follow up on Golda's quest to have her children in school. So we will follow up from duty bearers to ensure that Golda's children get an education. In other news, lack of adequate furniture at the Tebu MA Basic School in the Gasauf Municipality has compelled students to drop out of school while students now do academic work on their laps. According to South Africa's late president Nelson Mandela, education is a key tool to change the world. However, education on the African continent is said to be lagging behind. In Ghana, little has been done by successive governments to improve rural education. The Tebu MA Basic School appears to be a neglected school. Established about a decade ago, the school has been grappling with issues of inadequate desk, classroom blocks and textbooks. Pupils routinely perform academic works on their laps because there are no tables. Few pupils have resorted to bringing their own tables and chairs from homes to improvise. Although the Table MA Basic School serves pupils in 15 scattered communities, current challenges remain a disincentive forcing many to quit the school. Some come and then they look at how, especially in KG and the lower primary, how they sit on the floor. Some have to squat, some have to lie down on their chest and all of that. Most of the walls carry their children back. This dilapidated structure serves as classroom block for primary six, junior high school one, two and three pupils. Six pupils share a bench and four others sit on a dual desk, a situation negatively affecting their health and academic activities. We suffer from our spine and a lot, so we need adequate furniture. Pupils go through difficulties accessing their classrooms during the rainy season. Caroline Luthrot is a teacher and a second supervisor at the school. Far back in the 2012, when I was released to this place, and before then, they were studying under trees, and we were not having structures. When it rains, it's very terrible. Assistant Headmaster Gustave Yamwa said persistent plea to get the Gas South Educational Directorate to address their predicament have failed. I must confess, it's very difficult. Look at where we are, commuting from that place, um, the uh, financial cost involved, the risk. is only through Okada we used to come here. And so when you wake up in the morning and then you think of all these things, if you are not very careful, you might find somewhere and sit. 
The Tebu MA Basic School is not a beneficiary of government's free school feeding program and it is also not disability friendly. And that's it for the segment. But before we go, Isa, mm. talking about inclusive societies, yeah. we need to do more as a country to ensure that parents who have children with special needs are able to send them to school. You've said it all. I believe duty bearers are also mm. watching and they can also come out with policies because children like that cannot solve their own problems. They need uh, those who make the policies to come to the aid, and I'm sure they are watching. Well, this program is sponsored by Star Ghana with support from DFID, Danida, and the European Union. Join us again same time on Saturday and Sunday for another exciting edition. Thanks for watching. Good evening and welcome back to News 360 here on TV3. My name is Anako Jaffre with a sports update. Let's begin with boxing where self-acclaimed local boxing king Brian Makamoko, a.k.a. Bukum Bunku, has been handed his first professional defeat by Baste Samer. The talkative Bukum Bunku was handed a seventh round knockout in front of a massive crowd at the Bukum Boxing Arena on Saturday night. It was a moment of truth as Bukumbanku sat on a stool in the red corner with a deep cut on the right eyebrow. The 12 round non title championship began with a challenge over the size of the globes. The two boxers then shook each other towards the end of round one in a give and take exchange that kept the arena agog. Younger Basti proved he was up for the task as he stood tall and firm even in the face of intimidations from Bukumbanku. Basti Samir went all out in round three, dropping Banku twice to show his readiness. By this time, most pandects were convinced it was only a matter of time for Bukumbanku to be defeated. Banku threw in his all in a bid to fulfill his pre-match mantra of stopping his opponent in round six, but failed to even record a knockdown. Basti Samil came back in a stronger force, pinned Bukum Banku to the ring, but the referee stepped in. A clinical punch sent Banku crashing onto the ring and out of contention. Basti Samir ended the undefeated record of Bukumbanku to improve his own record of 16 wins, 1 draw and 15 knockout. Bukumbanku now has 29 wins, 1 loss with 22 knockout. And Portia can't even watch the bout, you know, after what happened last night. But um, former world featherweight champion and WBC Hall of Famer Zuma, the Professor Nelson, has given thumbs up to Basti in his win over Bukum Banko. The experienced former boxer, however, advised Basti to take his training seriously if he should aim at becoming a world champion. I'm very excited uh, about this fight, you know, this is a very tough fight and um, I'm, I'm happy uh, I'm here tonight. Did you see this coming? When they started, I know that this fight cannot go to the distance, you know, but I don't know who, whether Basti or Lugo Banco. What do you think Basti should do? What Basti is supposed to do is what he's doing. You know, we are here witness what what happened. You know, so um, all we have to do is we have to pray for him. You know, you have to be, you have to take the boxing serious. You know, you know you can get it if you really want it. If uh, he really want to be a world champion, he knows what you have to do. How can Bukum Banku um, come out of that defeat? Boxing is a boxing. If you lose, it doesn't show that uh, it, that's your end. You know, uh, he lost. He haven't lost before. He, 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 he didn't have the experience of losing. Today, you know, today he's, he has lost. Now he know that he can lose. So uh, when he's training, he's training very serious.
Meanwhile, Sami Basti has offered Bukumbanku a rematch of that bout that happened on Saturday night. So let's see if Bukumbanku will come back for a rematch. But now we turn our attention to the Ghana Premier League and the league ended um, earlier today for the 2016-2017 season. And these are the results from the last games of the league. And as you can see pretty shortly on your screens here, Ashanti Gold beat Ediana Stars by four goals to two. Ediana Stars, already champions of the Ghana Premier League. Bechem United stayed up in the league after beating Great Olympics by one goal to zero. So it means that Olympics, the team with the most nicknames in the Ghana Premier League, are back to Division 1. And then Brekum Chelsea also beat Tema Youth by two goals to zero. And Tema Youth are back to Division 1, where they came from. And then Boga All-Stars, already relegated, were beaten by Busuan Dwells by three goals to one. And then Elmina Sharks also beaten Wa All-Stars by two goals to zero. Accra had to folk also do zero zero with Interallies. That result meant that Interallies stay up in the Ghana Premier League. They will be in action next season when the league resumes. And then Liberty Professionals also beat Kumasi Asante Kotoko by two goals to one. That result was crucial for the Dansuman Bay side because it secured them their status in the Ghana Premier League. And then West Africa Football Academy also drew 1-1 one -one with Mediama in that particular one. But now, let's go and hear from two of the coaches who ensured that their teams got the results they needed today to ensure that they stayed up in the league. But before that, let's look at the Ghana Premier League table. So as you can see here, the C in front of Indiana Stars represents them as champions of the Ghana Premier League. West Africa Football Academy were hoping to win the league. That didn't happen for them. They came second, Accra Sufuk third, and Ebusia Dwarfs fourth. So the whole story around this is that Comercia Sante Kotoko are out of the top four um, for the first time in many years in the Ghana Premier League. But the first half of the league table is completed by Brekum Chelsea, Mediama, Wa All-Stars and Comercia Sante Kotoko. Let's go to the bottom half of the Ghana Premier League table and show you how things did go as far as that is concerned. So the second half of the Ghana Premier League table coming up shortly for you. There we have it. Elmina Sharks, you know, um, we're ninth in the Ghana Premier League, and that's the club owned by Dr. Papakwesi Indum. Ashanti Gold were 10th in the Ghana Premier League. Liberty Professionals also secured their Premier League status, finishing 11th in the league. Bechem United and then Inter Allies. So these are the teams relegated, and you can see there. Tema Youth, back to Division 1. Great Olympics, back to Division 1. And then Boga All-Stars, also back to Division 1. So when the season begins next year, you won't see these three teams in the Ghana Premier League. But now let's hear from two coaches. Karim Zito is coach of Inter Allies and then Michael Ose is coach of Liberty Professionals. They've been sharing their thoughts on staying up in the Ghana Premier League for another season. Inter Allies have qualified to stay uh, with the Premier Division again, which means the reason, of, the reason why I'm being brought to come and help has been achieved. So I'm very, very happy about it. And you all saw it, the way the game went. It was not so easy for us. We tried as much as possible to score, but we couldn't. Hearts of Hope were on their feet. They couldn't, let, they couldn't allow them to score them. So at the end of the day, we are content with the result of uh, the draw. It was a very difficult game, but we were, able, we were very tactical, and then we, we were very determined to get the whole three points to stay into the league. Uh, I think that we, we started very well, uh, but later in the, in the first half, we, we considered uh, very easy go, but when we came to the second half, we were able to leave the game and put a lot of pressure on them and then get the two goals. So uh, I'm, I'm happy that the, the boys were very, very tactical, disciplined, and then they were determined to get the whole three points. Now we take you to the under 17 cup currently ongoing in India, and there were two um, quarter final games that were played earlier today. And that result meant that England are through to the um, under 17 World Cup semi final. They took on Brazil. Brazil did take out Germany from the competition, and Mali will be up against Spain. And Spain also were very convincing earlier today. So these are the semi final pairings. We still have an African country in there in Mali who beats the Black Starlets of. Of Ghana to progress to it. And that's all the sports here on News 360. My name is Anako Jaffe. Thanks very much for watching. Always a pleasure serving you. Good evening. Well, coming up, we have international news.
and the World Health Organization has cancelled Robert Mugabe's goodwill ambassador role. Well, the World Health Organization has revoked the appointment of Zimbabwe's Robert Mugabe as a goodwill ambassador following widespread outcry. WHO had said he had consulted with the Zimbabwean government and decided that rescinding Mr. Mugabe's position was in the best interest of the WHO. And in other international news, the Catalan president, Carlos Puigdemont, says the region will not accept Madrid's plan for direct rule. He described it as the worst attack on Catalonian's institutions since General Franco's 1939-1975 dictatorship under which regional autonomy was dissolved. Coming up, entertainment news. Entertainment news is brought to you by Well tonight in the segment though the show started after 10 p.m. instead of the scheduled time of 8 patrons got the worth of their money or patrons stood on their feet to enjoy various performances by different artists. Meanwhile, xylophone media signees Kumi Gita and Obibini Buafo were exempted from the performances. A report by Adra Amufose. After over two hours of lateness and an almost half-empty auditorium, Becca gave her fans an epic moment to remember. The Dark Da Superstars concert, which looked dull from the beginning, picked up after a couple of performances. It was characterized by back-to-back -back performances comprising old and new tracks of hers. <laughs> Becca brought on A-listers from both Nigeria and Ghana to share in the celebration. The likes of rap guru Sarkodie, M.I. and Ice Prince did not disappoint the crowd. Dancehall magicians Shatawale and Stoneboy, as always, took fans to another level of performance. <laughs> Pop hit makers the one that calls Mr. Easy and Pato Rankin stage act almost brought the roof of the National Theatre down. <laughs> Former First Lady Floyd Wajman Rollins stole the show halfway. <laughs> However, the surprise act of the night, BET award winner Whiskit, set the whole place on fire when he jumped on stage out of the blue to entertain audience. <laughs> Though a great night, audience were disappointed as they expected xylophones Kumigita and Obibini to add their performances to the ninth tour list as had been advertised but that did not happen well i'm sure we'll wait to see becca at 20 more mm. years ahead for her to perform mm. great tracks for us that's it for this edition of News 360. My name is Lisa Mwami. And I am Portia Gabo. Coming up is Ghana's Most Beautiful.